Okay na? So, ituloy na natin ang ating discussion sa Property Plant and Equipment Accounting. And today, ang pag-uusapan natin ay patungkol sa Change in Useful Life, Change in Depreciation Method, and Change in Residual Value. Na basically, ang kanilang accounting ay under ng Change in Accounting Estimate. Therefore pala, bago natin pag-usapan yung mismong topic, unahin muna nating liwanagin itong change in accounting estimate. Pero bago ulit ito, kailangan din muna nating sagutin, bakit ba yung entity ay gumagawa ng estimation? In this particular context, depreciation. Ang ibig ko sabihin ay ganito, maraming dahilan kung bakit nag-e-estimate yung entity. Pero ito lang yung ibibigay nating sagot. Yung patungkol sa dalawang qualitative characteristics na na-explain na natin matagal na panahon na. Yung patungkol sa faithful representation and relevance. Relevance mean if the information will affect the users in making his or her decision. Ang ibig sabihin, let's say PPE. Di ba isang major account yan sa financial reporting? Kasi yung value ng mga assets na yan ay sobrang pataas. At alam din naman natin na mayroong depreciation. At kahit hindi eksakto yung amount niya, kine-estimate nga lang, tanggalin mo, mawala siya sa reporting. So what can we say? Yung decision making ng user will be impaired, maaapektuhan. Eh kasi nga, alam mo may nangyari na ganun. Eh hindi mo na-report kasi nga hindi mo alam yung pinakang eksakto. O maaapektuhan yung kanyang decision making. Kaya therefore mag estimate And same goes through, nabanggit na. Because they go hand in hand. Faithful representation. Okay? It represent what it purports to represent. Alam mo namang nangyari yung ganun. So therefore, i-report mo yung totoo. Eh, totoo ba na nagkaroon ng depreciation talaga dun sa BPE? The answer is yes. Kahit hindi mo alam yung mismong eksaktong-eksaktong amount, alam mo naman na nangyari yun. So therefore, mag -e estimate talaga. So ang ibig kong sabihin, isa sa dahilan kung bakit mag -e estimate talaga yung NPD ay dahil dito sa mga qualitative characteristics na to. And again, estimate ang depreciation expense eh kasi yung factors of depreciation yung useful life, yung residual value, ay estimate din naman na napag-usapan na doon sa mga nakaraang BD discussion. Ngayon, pwede, pwede bang yung estimate ng entity ay mabago through time? Pwede bang dati ganito estimate nila din paglipas ng panahon na iba na? And the answer is yes. Kasi nga, estimate lang yun, nagtatansya ka lang. Okay? Eh bakit? Bakit maaaring mabago yung estimate niya? Eh pwedeng kasi nagkamali. Overlook. Di ba? Mistake. Ganun lang kasimple. O maaaring din dahil na bago na yung panahon, na bago yung sitwasyon. Akala niya dati ganito. Pinoproject niya in the future, ganun pa rin. Pero naiba, naiba yung sitwasyon. Therefore, yung mga dati mong assumption, mababago na rin. Let's say, sabi mo, ganito yung pattern. Kung paano magdidepreciate yung asset, ay nabago yung pattern. So therefore, mag adjust ka rin. Kaya nga, inaalaw na mabago yung estimate. Kaya pumapasok itong topic na to, itong konsepto na to, change in accounting estimate. Na by the way, may separate discussion pa tungkol dyan. Hindi pa lang ngayon. Parang pinapahapyawan pa lang natin or binibigyan ito ng introduction. Pero ang banggit, ganito yung treatment sa accounting. Kung sakaling magbago ng estimate ang NDB, the treatment is currently and prospectively. What does it mean? Current and future. Meaning, maaari nga kasing nagsimula ka na at a certain point. Then lumilipas yung panahon. Nung nandito ka na, nagbago ka. There is a change in estimate. Nagbago ka. Ano ngayon ang gagawin mo dun sa account na nabago? Let's say PPE. Anong gagawin mo dito? Lahat ng changes, lahat ng changes, ang apektado lang daw ay yung ngayon at yung bukas. The current in the future. In other words, lahat ng nangyari in the past will not be affected. Kung dati nagde-depreciate ka ng 100,000 at paglipas ng panahon yung caring amount ng asset because of this depreciation, let's say ay naging 800,000, at sa susunod na palahon, naisip mo, nalaman mo, parang medyo mali yung estimate ko dati. Dapat pala ang depreciation ng 75,000 lang. Ia-adjust mo pa ba yung naka-record noong moment na magkaroon ng exchange in estimate? Noong moment na magbago ka, ia-adjust mo pa ba yung record? The answer is no. Again, 
pass is not included. Hindi na siya maaapektuhan kasi nga whenever there is a change in estimate, the treatment is currently and prospectively. Tsaka ang isa pa, ikaw pa ngayon na nagbabago ng estimate ay siguradong sigurado na rin. The answer is no, hindi ka din naman sigurado. Estimate pa rin naman ang ginagawa mo. Okay, so therefore, bakit mo papapaguhin yung nakaraan na hindi ka rin sigurado, na ngayon naman ay hindi ka pa rin sigurado? Bakit pa natin sila papakailaman? Hayaan na lang natin yung nakaraan. Wala ka nang mababago dyan. So, for the first place, hindi ka rin naman sigurado ngayon. Bakit pag binago mo pa, sigurado ka bang tama ka na rin? Di ba? Hindi rin naman. That's why the treatment is currently and prospectively. Ang pinapanggit natin yun, kasi mayroong isang accounting concept, yung change in accounting policy, na ang treatment ay retroactive. Meaning, naapektuhan yung the past, in the past, di ba? Yung, yung nakaraan, ina-adjust. Pero hindi pa rin siya yung topic ngayon. Ang punto ko lang, mayroong ano, changes, mayroong change na naapektuhan yung past. At mayroong silang reason. Ang pinapaliwalag natin dito, bakit yung accounting estimate, hindi naapektuhan yung past. Or only the now and the future. Eh, kasi nga, estimate pa din naman yung binawa mo. Wala kang karapatan na baguhin yung nakaraan kasi hindi ka pa rin naman sigurado kahit ngayon. No? Something like that. Now, let's move on with the topic. Na actually, napakasimple lang itong discussion na to. May technique nga yan eh. Di ba? Kung paano siya sinasagutan. Una, we have here change in use of life. So, meaning, sabi mo, kunwari, dati ang life niya, 10 years, hindi pala kasi nagkamali ka, okay? Pwede sabi mo, 8 years. Pwede rin mas tumaba, 12 years pala. Pwede, pwede rin humaba, mas tumagal, eh kasi sabi mo, mas efficient pala, mali yung estimate ko, mas maganda pa pala. O kaya, mas, um, mas umikli yung life niya kasi nagkaroon ng technological changes. So, therefore, yung kanyang, yung kanyang service life, di ba? Yung talagang useful life niya, eh, mas umikli. So, therefore, binabago mo yun through, through the years, okay? So, yun yung change in useful life. Change in depreciation method naman. Kasi halimbawa, dati gumagamit ka ng straight line. Then, alaman mo na bago na yung pattern. Iba pala, may mas magandang uh, pattern of depreciating that asset. Diba, sabi natin, yung pagpili ng depreciation method ay depende sa kung paano yung pattern nung, nung asset. Kung paano mabe-benefit yung NDD. Ay, nalaman mo, iba pala. May mas maganda pala. So, therefore, there is a change in depreciation method. Same goes through with the residual value. Diba yun yung value the moment na at the end of its useful life? Na hindi ka rin naman sigurado. Pero as time goes on, nalaman mo, iba na pala ang value niyan. Mas mataas na pala or mas mababa. So, therefore, maaaring mabago din itong residual value na to. Okay? So, nonetheless, lahat naman ng mga yan ay under pa din ng estimate. Okay? Kasi nga, yung factor nga sa depreciation, yung mga, mga ginagamit sa pagkikwenta, ay estimate yung karamihan dun sa mga yun. Now, magbibigay tayo ng illustration kung paano siya mabilis masolve. Okay? Kasi yung iba nahihirapan dito sa, sa accounting change in accounting estimate, hindi ko malaman kung bakit. Para sa akin, napakasimple lang niya. Okay? Dito muna tayo. Mamaya po, sa, mamaya po tayo babalik sa topic. Ipapakita ko lang muna kung paano ginagawa ang straight line method depreciation. And then, i-apply natin itong mga to. Okay? With the changes. Halimbawa, meron tayong asset costing 120,000. It has a salvage value of 20,000. Therefore, the depreciable amount is 100,000. Kunwari, sa estimate po, initially, the useful life is 10 years. Therefore, the annual depreciation is 10,000. And then, we try to compute the clearing amount. Okay? That is 120,000 yung original cost and then we deduct the accumulated depreciation. We assume this is the first year of operation ng asset. I mean, no, sa UTI, first time mong ginamit yung asset. So therefore, 10,000. And the clearing amount is 110,000. And then, lumipas yung isang taon. Okay? Wala kung nga rin change in accounting estimate. How much will be the annual depreciation? The answer is, is still 10,000. Why? Because we are using straight line method at alam din naman natin that every year that is 10,000. Pero pag tinanong ka, paano nasolve yung 10,000? Doon sa second year, okay? Pwede bang ang ipakita kong presentation na ito pa rin? Itong original computation? The answer is yes. Okay? Kasi katama pa din naman yung sagot, is straight line nga eh. So, ang ibig ko sabihin, okay, kahit third year na, kahit year na, pwede mo pa din itong gamitin itong presentation na to. Kasi nga, is straight line. By the way, kanya-kanya yung depreciation method ng presentation. Ano? Pero ang punto ko lang, pwede mo itong gamitin. Ito yung kasunod na tanong. Okay? Dito na po papasok yung mga change in accounting estimate. Meron pa bang ibang paraan para masod yung 10,000 sa second year na hindi mo ginagamit itong original equation na to? And the answer is yes. Ano po yun? This will be our computation. Technique po ito ng county, ano? We have to get the remaining, the remaining amount, the remaining value, okay? 
the remaining value, and then we have to divide, divide by the remaining life, or remaining life. So remaining cost, or remaining value, divided by the remaining life. So therefore, you will still get the annual depreciation. Ang ibig mong sabihin, how much is the remaining cost in this particular scenario? Okay, the depreciable cost, remaining depreciable cost. Basically, pagdating ng second year, magsisimula tayo sa clearing amount na 110,000. And then, we have to deduct still the residual value of 20,000. So therefore, we will get this what we call 90,000. And that is the remaining, okay, depreciable amount. Ayan, so ito yung remaining cost. And then, we have to divide by the remaining life. Okay, dahil lumipas na yung isang taon, malamang hindi-divide na lang natin siya, hindi na sa 10 years, but rather sa 9 years. In effect, ang kanyang magiging annual depreciation is still 10,000. That is the another solution. Another solution po yan. Kahit lumipas pa yung kasunod na taon, let's say 8 years na, o di ba namang magiging magkano ang clearing amount? 100K, the residual value is still 20,000. So therefore, the, the remaining depreciable amount is 80,000. And then you divide by the 8 years, 8 years, so you will still get 10,000. Ang ibig kong sabihin lang, okay? Other than using the original equation, okay? The original cost, di ba? Ito mga to, okay? Pwede mong gamitin yung remaining uh, cost divided by the remaining life to get the annual depreciation whatever is the point di ba kung, kung i mean kung nasaan naman yung asset mo kung anong punto na ng buhay niya okay at ito yung sinasabi po natin knowing the second equation you can apply the changes easily ang ibig ko sabihin okay ito lang ang tandaan natin na equation Remaining cost divided by the remaining life And whatever is the changes By application of the accounting estimate Masasagutan mo ng tama Kasi remaining Meaning that is the value now okay? That is the current value Remaining cost, remaining life Therefore, di ba, papasok ka doon sa treatment Ng change in accounting estimate Which is now in the future Now, ay dahil yung value nila now Doon tayo magsimula Doon natin i-apply yung ating changes At kung ano man yung nakaraan Kung 120 man siya dati Di ba, o 100,000 yung depreciable amount I mean, wala na tayong pakialam doon Basta ngayon, ang pakialam natin Today, 90,000 na lang yung anlang Remaining depreciable amount Something like that Magkaroon tayo ng application para mas maunawaan, okay? So, ano yung mawa? Ito yung ating scenario. Okay? Lumipas ang isang taon, nagde-depreciate yung, ano, yung company. Ito yung lumalabas na kanilang figure. Then, later on, naisip nila, hindi na pala 10 years yung life. Mali pala, 2 years na lang daw. So, what will be our computation? So, we will have here the, 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 the clearing amount. Magsisimula tayo sa clearing amount, which is 110,000. Hindi naman nabagay yung residual value. So therefore, we have to deduct 20,000. At makikwenta natin ngayon yung depreciable amount. Okay? Na this time yung depreciable amount, ito na yung remaining. Okay? Kasi nga nag-base na tayo, hindi dun sa original cost, but rather dun sa clearing amount, yung value now. Okay? So therefore, the depreciable amount is 90,000. At sinabi that the remaining life is 2 years from today. So therefore, divided by, by 2 years. At magkano na ang annual depreciation, it will be 45,000. Nasagot na ba natin yun? The answer is yes. Kasi we use the remaining cost and then the remaining life. Kung sakaling sinabi naman lang, hindi na pala ano, 10 years, but rather, okay, ang sabi nila, uh, let's say 15 years, 15 years na daw, from the date of original acquisition. Binabanggit po natin yun kasi minsan nalilito yung problem. Ang sabihin nila, from the date of original acquisition, 15 years na pala. So, ibig sabihin, itong 15 years ay ikinukumpara dun sa 10 years, hindi dun sa ngayon. So, yung punto ko, ang gagamitin mo ba pag di-divide dito ay 15 years? Kung sakaling nabago ngayon? Okay, the answer is no. Kasi yung statement ng problem, from the date of original acquisition, so meaning, may isang taon nang lumipas, kaya hindi mo siya i-divide sa 15 years, but rather sa 14 years. Pero same pa din yung konsepto. Kung ilan yung remaining life, the moment that is a change in accounting estimate, change in useful life, yun yung gagamitin mo, whatever is the amount. Okay, ang punto ko lang, okay, pwede ka rin na yung 2 years, di ba, ang ginamit natin directly, pwede rin namang minainosan natin ng 1. So ang punto, English, okay, yung statement ng problem, pwede. Well, Yung statement ng problem, kung papaano mo sasagutan yun. Kasi depende nga eh, kung papaano niya ipinaliwanag. But the concept will remain the same. Remaining cost, remaining life. Okay? 
Now, paano kung sakali there is a change in depreciation method? How are we going to do that? The answer is simple. The same, okay? Naman, halimbawa, dati ang ginagamit ay straight line, nag-change sila. Let's say, output method. Okay? So, what will happen? Okay. Siyempre, aalamin pa din naman natin yung remaining cost na napag-usapan na kanina, yung depreciable cost, na it will become, uh, let's say, 90,000 doon sa ating example. Okay? At ang sabi, hindi na nagagamit yung straight line, output method na, at sinabi na there are 1,000 units na makukuha pa, o magagamitan pa. Okay? Yung nga yung production, let's say, machinery yan. So, nagagawin mo, therefore, you divide this by 1,000. So, same pa din yung konsepto. The remaining cost, divided by the remaining life. It's just that the life now is not in life in periods, but rather in units. So, pag nasolve mo na yan, okay, you will get now the depreciation per output, di ba? So, lalabas, let's say, ano, 90. At sila, may kunwari, nakagamit ng 10, di ba? 10 output, 10 output this year. So, ang gagawin mo, 90 times 10 will be 900. Yan yung maliging depreciation mo. Ang punto lang natin, kailangan mo mga malaman itong remaining cost. Okay? Pero paano naman kung sakaling hindi ganyan? Okay? From a straight line, nag-move siya, at ang ginamit ay double declining balance. So, parang ganun. So, same pa rin naman. Okay? Remaining cost divided by the... Uh, then, multiply by the... divided by the remaining life. Okay? Or kung hindi man divided by the remaining life, you have to to do how the new depreciation method is done. Ibig sabihin, kung paano yung ginagawa. Okay? Ngayon, kung sakaling double declining balance, di ba ang base na yung carrying amount? Eh kung nawari, pagkatapos nga nito, so magkano yung carrying amount? It's still 100, it's still become 110,000. Okay, kung nawari, di ba 10 years yan? So therefore, the straight line rate is 10%. Dahil double declining, magiging times 2. So therefore, 20%. So therefore, this uh, 110,000 multiplied by 20%, it will be the annual depreciation. Okay? So kung magkano man yan. So ang punto natin, okay? Na pag nabago yung ano yung yung method, okay, alamin lang natin kung paano nga siya ginagawa. At kung magkano yung remaining value na magiging base ng method, therefore doon tayo magsisimula. Sa pagkakataon ito, hindi na yung depreciable amount, yung remaining depreciable ang ginamit, but rather yung carrying amount na basically updated din yung remaining din kasi natural, di ba, may pasay isang taon. And then therefore, i-apply mo lang yung kanyang approach. So, kung double declining, therefore multiply by 20%. Okay? Kung sakaling yung residual value, mas madali pa na. O, halimbawa, okay, sabi hindi na daw 20,000 ang residual value, naging na daw 50,000, so it will happen. Same, same pa din naman, okay? The cost is 120,000. I mean, sorry, magsisimula tayo sa clearing amount, kasi syempre, ayan, remaining cost, remaining life. The, the clearing amount is 110,000, the new salvage value is 50,000. Okay, so therefore, we did that. O, how much is that? Ayan, so that will be 60,000. Okay? And then we divide it by the, the years. Let's say 9 years. Well, therefore, pali, babalik ka pa din sa remaining cost divided by the remaining life. At kung sakaling binago pa nila yung life, oh, sabi nito pa, nabago na ang residual value, nabago pa yung life, let's say, ginawa nila ng 2 years. So therefore, still then, kaya mo pa ding sagutin. Because we have the alternative, uh, parang ano, a way to solve yun ang remaining cost, the remaining life. Dahil nga change in accounting estimate, magsisimula ka doon sa remaining the moment na magkaroon ng changes. Okay? Alam ko na hindi pa rin sobrang maliwanag ito kasi nga theoretical yung ating explanation. As we apply that in problem solving, mas maintindihan po natin yung aking sinasabi na parang hindi naman talaga mahirap ito, itong change in accounting estimate. Simple lang yan. At hindi lang siya applicable dito sa depreciation na topic. Applicable din yan sa ibang mga topics pa na merong change in accounting estimate. Alamin nyo lang yung remaining at saka yung changes na magte-take effect ngayon. At tingnan mo yung connection niya dun sa remaining value kung ano man yung yung ine-estimate natin. Okay? So, kung sakaling meron ka pong natutunan sa ating video discussion, maaari nyo i-like itong video lecture na ito. Pero kung gusto mo pang may mas matutunan, nandito pa yung iba naming mga discussion patungkol sa property plant and equipment. Maaari nyo mapanood. Siya lamang at maraming salamat.